here with Kenny from California based Amarok, I think. Uh, Amarok. Amarok. Okay. I was, I was close. Um, if you don't know them, they're a fucking fantastic, like doom band with some fan, some awesome, like black metal elements thrown in there, which if you've listened to doom for a while, it's not, it's refreshing to have something new in there. Um, have you heard temple of the fuzz, Witch? no, so they, they're very similar doom with the, uh, with the black metal. I, I, their, their latest album, uh, apotheosis is, it is a fantastic album, but I'll tell you their, their songs aren't, aren't like 18 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, um, it, re- it requires some patience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so Kenny, I greatly appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your night to, uh, hang out and chat with me. Yeah. I, I appreciate, uh, you having me and, uh, asking the band to do this. Uh, turns out I'm the one available and, uh, yeah, I love stuff like this. So I'm Rock in. and roll. Cool. I like to, I like to fucking talk. So my wife's like, yeah. every time we go somewhere, I need you with me. Cause you will talk to everyone and I don't have to. And I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good sounds good yeah it'll take me a minute and then we'll get into a rhythm here i'm sure yeah for sure so yeah. the band you guys have been together 12 13 years somewhere in that yeah yeah i think even pushing that i was i was actually just thinking before this phone call i was like man I, you know the one thing that we get asked often i forget is yeah how long it's actually been but yeah uh over 10 years yeah yeah well i think so 2012 you did that you had your first like release um and did the split with nth which was you know a fantastic split um yeah thanks so i was like huh. i assume it was somewhere around there i don't know yeah you're right you're right it was about um i'd say it we were quick i think it was about a year that we were we were playing these songs <clears throat> before we recorded it uh here in our hometown Mine too. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. A different formation or different lineup then, um, of course. But uh, yeah, it took us a minute to figure it out, you know, uh, and figuring out what we were going to sound like. And since then, of course, we've evolved. But it's been it's been an awesome journey. And I think the album title itself for this new one really explains it, you know, resilience, because it's required a lot from yeah. us to, to stick with this for this long. Well, I think, you know, it really does for, for a band with any length of time, you know, you, there are going to be sometimes the rotating band members, right. And there's always highs and lows within the band. And if you're not willing to, uh, to really deal with those hard conversations, then, then it'll, you know, it'll really drive a wedge between everyone. It's so true. Uh, there's, you know, there's, it's required a lot of, uh, uh, courage too i think with that stuff and learning how we operate as as a band and and brandon uh he and i are the original members um and he and i have really learned a lot through this experience together i've been reflecting on that recently i think this album just feels like a milestone of reflection too you know we've been doing this for a while we haven't been consistent with the albums but then again these out al- these pieces that we're coming out with are you know an hour plus of music and uh you know it's it's a process and it's a, like you said you know uh tough conversations need to be had if you're going to stick with it well that's the truth you know and then you do things like i know you guys are getting ready to to go do a full u.s tour and living in the van with someone for that long is <laughs> <laughs> We do well with it, man. We've got a formula down, uh, you know, with 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 Nathan and Colby too. Uh, we've I, I I've been in the van with other bands, and uh, this is by far the easiest band I've traveled with. Not knocking any of my buddies out there that I've traveled with, but uh, you know, it's probably why Amrock's still here kicking is because we can uh, we can uh, coexist in the same van together too. Yeah, it's dude, and uh, I was talking with. Uh... Jordan from Sunbear the other day and he's like he I think he put it really well it's like when you're in a band it's you're in a it's a marriage man you know you guys 100% have to have to be able to deal with it you know the 
the good, the bad, and the ugly. And and those, mm -hmm. uh, in in my business, they call them fierce conversations. You know, yeah. those, those conversations can sometimes be um, daunting to to have. You know, for sure, for sure, man. I agree with you there. And uh, you know, I think a, a, something I was thinking of as you were saying that too is. You really kind of got to get out of the way too. If 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 you've got a big ego and you want to be a hot shot or whatever it might be, or you know, just really push for something that you want, you know, you have to be willing to gel and work with other people, and sometimes just step aside too. You know, I think that that's a, an important part too with that fierceness as well as being able to speak up and talk about the truth or whatever you're feeling with one another. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's like it's like we're talking about being married. You know, yeah. It's, oh. It doesn't feel. I'm not married, but. It, it feels very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm married. I totally, <laughs> you know, I get it. Um, and I'm, you know, I think it, it feels like the, the band that the way that it lives today, you're, you're very grateful for. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We are. Um, nothing's come easy for us in this, with this project. Um, <clears throat> nothing's fa <clears throat> falling in our lap. <clears throat> We've watched other bands, you know, like, oh man, they just boom, you know, and uh, and uh, that's that's not our process. But I think that that part of that having to work for every little milestone that we've we've had. I mean, it's it's we've been on the verge of like, well, maybe this band's gonna be done so many times, you know, yeah. uh, whether it's someone moving or just trials and tribulations. Uh, we've been through a lot, so yeah. Uh, you really got to stick with it. You well, you do, you know. And what what made you and Brandon say, okay, we're we're not done. We're gonna we're gonna keep going. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, seriously, man, I could. I, it makes me actually feel a little bit emotional because it's we love this shit. You know, we love it, and and we've. We have so much fun making this stuff together. We've we've created such this unique process. And, um, you know, I mean, I just think about all the times that we've just persevered because things are shitty or whatever circumstances we're under. And it's, I've been pretty amazed by the, truthfully, the resilience, you know, and it's it's because we love it. We put our heart and soul into it, you know? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, most, most bands that, that go out and they hit the road for a month or whatever at a time. <laughs> yeah. They, they do it because they love it. Cause you know, it, it's, there's, there's a level that you have to get to before it's really profitable. And the rest of the time you're like, Oh shit. Like, all right. You know, I, I know bands yeah. that have uh, did some dumpster diving to get food while <laughs> they were on tour. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I remember, being in those situations, being younger too, and more in maybe what I could call the punk years, but you know, it's, it's doesn't, it's not just a punk thing. And, yeah. uh, and yeah, I mean, the, the truth is too, is, you know, when we think about our intentions, <clears throat> it's never been to like make it, I think we know by the, by default, the genre that we're in is pretty niche. And, yeah. um, there's something special about that too. And it's not saying that we can't make, you know, a profitable income as we've watched some of our friends actually do really well. Um, and they're kind of at the top of the game, uh, I think in the scene. And, um, it's really amazing to see that and to know, you know, like that would be great. That'd be a goal to work towards. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of times with all this stuff, it's all out of pocket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, with nothing in return, you know, it's for the good times and it's for the music. Yep. It's, it's the, the, it's for the most important thing, the memories, right? Truthfully. Yeah. I mean, the experience, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's what I try to preach to my kids is like, doesn't matter how much you go out or make or, or whatever, what you want to do is create memories, right? Create memories yeah. with the ones that you love, because at the end of the day, nothing else matters. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be I in the, the big fucking mansion or any of that. Just no. create the memories and have the good times, you know? Yeah, it's it's true and flow with it, you know, because <laughs> it's not all easy and that's a part of the, the whole game. Yeah. You know? So I was I was looking at your tour dates and I'm in Louisville. You guys are hitting Nashville and then Indianapolis. Ah. <laughs> Just skipping you, man. Yeah, well, that's all right. I'm gonna I think I'll hit one of those shows because it's I think Nashville's 
two and a half south and then indianapolis is like two hours north oh you're in between so you got a choice yeah well that's awesome man we'd appreciate it you coming out you know I'm about yeah to make sure we get you some some of our omrock gear if you do oh rock and roll uh yeah have you guys played black circle or dark matter before uh i think <laughs> i'm not the best with this stuff but dark matter i believe that we did but like 2016 or might have been on the 20 18 tour i'm not sure okay both of them are real cool places i've not been to dark matter cool. in, in a number of years we we do frequent uh black circle you know a lot of people from here head up there because it's it's a really killer venue to uh to see a show it's real oh, i love that you know it's real intimate and they uh you know the people all the bartenders and staff are super super cool like that 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 really helps the experience just be that much more you know when it's like a good set and setting and and the people are cool and usually you know they're it just feels like it's um communal yeah and that, i love that feeling you know like I, i'm with my people even if i don't know everybody here <laughs> right that's exactly it you know and that's yeah. uh, i think one of my favorite things is taking my daughter i took her to her first like metal show and it was uh Max and Igor were were doing the Return to Roots tour, right? Awesome, awesome. And it, some you know some some really great uh, local openers, and we we go to the show, and the local openers immediately, oh my god, you're the coolest thing ever. She was, I don't know, nine or something. They're giving her like signed drumsticks and signed CDs, and she was like, they don't think I'm weird. I'm like, fuck no, they love that people are coming to the show and having a good time you know yeah you're welcome there too and that's so cool to, to see at a young age you know because <laughs> depending on when you get involved it could be kind of intimidating looking from the outside in oh, it turns sure. out everybody is usually just full of love man yeah they we look like a bunch of hard asses and everyone's like come here give me a hug and like <laughs> like oh shit you know <laughs> Yeah, hard on the outside, soft on the inside. Maybe I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw everyone under that one that umbrella, but you know, yeah, the good majority, people out there in the scene, sure. you know. Yeah. So, uh, with this, you know, with the upcoming album released on June 28th, right? Mm-hmm. That's fucking awesome. What? Um, I'm a physical format kind of guy. Yeah. What kind yeah. of physical formats do you guys have? This time so far out the gate, uh, it's sparse, but you know, we're just doing the vinyl right now. Um, I think we're gonna lock in a CD at some. I mean, the goal is to lock in a CD and, and and then have a tape. I mean, we've talked to a few friends that are putting out tapes, uh, versus putting it out ourselves too. Um, so I think that we'll see a tape version for sure. And then I still am a fan of the compact discs, man. I like, are that. you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of discs, but I've like. I will. I always support a band. You know, if I'm listening to a band, I'll listen to them on streaming. But I always make sure to pick up a, a physical copy because I, I want, I want them to know, hey, yeah, like, I support you. You know, more than the third of a cent or whatever it is on streaming. Right, right. <laughs> I know it's so cool to directly support the bands in that way because it does take a toll and uh it's just it's cool man i like that you that you do that i i tend to do the same you know um uh just try to pick something up if i can if i can afford it you know yeah for sure the and uh, vinyl like you said that and i'm just like fuck yeah that's what yeah. i wanted to hear you know yeah yeah we're stoked we got some couple cool different color variants and i, I we just we we did it all ourselves and that i think is a special part about this album too um a lot of brandon's help he's really good with formatting stuff and putting it all together you know um and i'm gonna fail right now but the artist that did the the album cover you know aside from him you know we all contributed even with some of our own photography and and uh yeah so it just feels like something you're a little bit more extra proud in when you're a part of every step of the process when you're just completely doing it yourself and i we've all been discussing how good that feels you know yeah. and so the vinyl just to me looks that much better because of that and uh yeah i mean that's always the first chosen format and um 180 gram vinyl i think with the way that we sound uh it's nice to put that music on some big speakers and people tend to have that type of setup you know with their record players these days 
Yeah, for sure. So you're what what is it like 64, 65 minutes long? I think so. I think so. Uh well, if we're on four LPs, yeah, I mean, it depends on the RPM and whatnot, but uh yeah, it's I mean a good hour and some change. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was trying to do the math and I'm like, holy shit, that's a that, <laughs> that's good. But it's you know, it it's something you can really um you can really just get into. Like I'm gonna attribute it to a, another album that I, I just get into and really chill out to, and that's um Dark Side of the Moon. Oh heck yeah, man. You know, like yeah. You can just get in and enjoy every single part of it. And every time you listen to it, you hear something just a little bit different. Like, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't catch that last time. Like, that's freaking cool. Right. I've, I've probably listened. I think I've listened to it three or four times now. Awesome. I'm like, ah, oh, this is fucking good. I like that, man. I like that, that, that reference too, of course. I mean, that's, that's always an awesome reference. And, um, think that that's really our intention with this stuff i mean each song in itself i mean it's it's meant to take you on a whole entire journey and the way that we've tracked out all these albums is we usually have a theme around each one and the chapters continue so it's like we're writing this big book so you know on this newer album it doesn't start with one it starts with oh forgive me 10 11 no 9 10 11 no, 10, 11, 12, and 13. That's right. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Roman numerals. And we're, we kind of, yeah, they're tracks one, two, and three, four on the album. But uh, we are we like to think of this as this continuous story. And each, you know, um, album that comes out is, you know, contributing it's to that. Uh, and in theme, I mean, we haven't found a way to, you know, like, I don't know if we're going to lock it all together here or what, but it just feels continuous to us. And so I think that on this album, it's coming back around full circle, you know, with that theme in mind, too. I mean, we just really want to take people away. Uh, and, so, just, you know, yeah. So it's like a concept band, not a concept album. Really, truly. I feel that way. Yeah, that's cool. I, I really mm -hmm. like that, you know, because it's. um I all, you know, I, I like bands that I think a lot of people do like bands that evolve. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there yeah. are the bands that stay the same, which is, you know, like ACDC is a fantastic band, but you mm -hmm. know what you get with them every single time. Yeah. And then as a band evolves it, I really like that that you look at it like it's it's a continuous evolution right the new album is another chapter in you know the book of this band exactly i feel like that's yeah. um uh, it's a unique perspective you know yeah yeah it's cool and i mean i really see how it's evolved i mean with the changing of members mainly drummers but um <clears throat> just all of it i think that it's like how are we gonna you know, what are we going to push ourselves on on this next record? You know, uh, whatever it is, getting out there with our comfort zones or, or just doing more instrumentally wise, you know, like uh, we really used a lot of different um, things on this album, too, for sound effects and percussion and re really brought a lot of elements in. And that just, you know, it 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 solidifies it for us. It's like, yep, that's what we we're meant to do in this current, you know, formation. And then it evolves and expands again so that's really cool that it that you know that it feels like that for you you know i think uh um, yeah it it helps helps come off to a to the listener as like genuine mm, and, yeah. and it really helps them connect you know when the when the band as a whole feels like oh this is this is what we we're supposed to do this is the the album we wanted to write or we were supposed to write it yeah it translates really well yeah that's cool man i appreciate that uh it's it's <clears throat> kind of interesting to think of it being any differently um as <clears throat> that's really how this started i mean i think the first album <clears throat> we didn't know how that was going to work but we had this idea of like chapters <clears throat> and using these roman numerals and by the time we recorded the next song, it was like, oh, yeah, this is what we're doing. 
this is just going to keep evolving and we're going to continue the numbers of this, the songs, AKA the chapters or each segment, you know, cause I mean, I really songs, it feels so much more to me than just songs. It's, it's a whole, it's a whole, I mean, it's a whole journey. I, I've used that word a few times, but that's the best way I can, for yeah. lack of a better word, describe it. Yeah. I mean, that that's a great way to describe it. I always look, you know, I referenced Pink Floyd because I, I look at, I like to listen to whole albums because to me it's it's a giant piece of art and you can you can listen to the journey of you know whatever band or whoever wrote it through that entire album and it's you almost feel like what they're uh what they're going through you know that's a really cool way of viewing that cuz I feel the same way I've never worded it in that way but that's exactly what it feels like especially on this last album <clears throat> lyrically <clears throat> excuse me man lyrically and and even just the way we compose the music and the way that that you know building arcs to certain parts and and whatnot and then it does it feels it feels so cathartic because it's also just this release of emotions and we i think we really just like express ourselves emotionally through that um which like you said you know something like dark side of the moon i mean gosh <clears throat> the first few times that that the album really landed with me i experienced such a wide array of emotions and went through this whole journey with the band like you're saying it's like yeah we're like together in this almost you know yeah and it it you know it even if you're not a musician you know i think when you you feel that from someone else you feel like right. oh i am a part of this I was meant to be a part of this. And that's always like, fuck, that is so fucking cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. I, that, that, that's important to us. Um, whether it's on the albums or even in the live setting, we, the intention just, you know, just kind of getting, we're all getting crushed together. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. So tell me about, tell me about the live show. I have yet to experience it and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, it might be a little bit different on this tour, <clears throat> depending <clears throat> on what's going on, supporting our buds in Mismore. Uh, we are the band with so much gear, um, mainly because Brandon is running out of uh, two bass cabs, got two bass heads, and then us guitar players have these custom-built cabinets that are basically full stacks with with heads as well, and it just, it, <laughs> it's just like a tower behind us. And um, <clears throat> that's typically what we've been doing. We're just, we're messing around. Uh, it's a very visceral experience because of that. Um, and uh, it's it's been effective. Uh, I think with our, our evolving in the music, um, not all of the things translate late live at that volume with that yeah. heavy artillery and that bass when we're really playing these pretty harmonies and whatnot. You know, because I think before we were really more just kind of straightforward power uh power chord riffs just you know uh and you know i mean there's a lot going on now so that's what our setup has been and we actually are unsure of how we might we might dial things down a little bit also to play to the clubs and work with the sound guys more we'll see how it goes though yeah crank it up fuck you <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a whole different experience on stage when when we're up there with that sound. I mean, I'm physically affected, um, like heavily physically affected sometimes just because of the bass on the stage. Eyes we're like are in shaking. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. I've felt my eyes like felt like they're going to vibrate right out of my head. It really did. Felt like my brain was also getting like turned around inside of my head. <laughs> oh, it's not loud. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. It'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, awesome though. Like that's, you know, when I go to a live show, that's what I want. I want to be, I want to feel the bass. I want to be fully engulfed in the sound because it's, I'm, I'm not there to talk to anyone. I'm there to enjoy the show, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that we've always forced people to, because there's not even time for chit chat. You can't really, we, you know people are gonna have to yell into each other's ears yeah <laughs> to even have a chat and i think that that's been part of it you know it's just kind of like commanding the audience to <laughs> surrender to the sound you know it's a great way like nope sorry you're not talking unless you go outside dude 
Yeah. Uh, and I think more so now, yeah, it's still about the volume and, and, and that abrasiveness. But I think with that same idea where we're working more, you know, with the intricacies in the music mm -hmm. to do that. And of course it's still about the volume. Um, but to still pull people in with just something that has these slow progressions, whatever it might be, our own intentions. I think that it's it's just shifted slightly, but it's that same thing where we're, we're we want to engage fully with the audience, yeah. and however it comes through in the live setting, you know. Yeah, that's cool. So, mm -hmm. what what do you hope? Uh, let's with the tour. What do you hope the uh, the ultimate outcome is? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that this is just a good one for us. This is an awesome opportunity to uh, get asked um, by uh, Ms. Moore, uh, ALN being one of our personal friends that we've known for quite some time. And um, also our good friend that lives from this same city, Jesse Schreiman, who's in Bellwitch, and he's going to be playing drums for the live uh line up with those guys and so initially i'm just thinking man this is gonna be fun this is like a lot of friends and like if we can just have a good time at at minimum that's great and i think that you know i'm just really looking forward to om has been in the shadows for <clears throat> many years we kind of creep out and then we kind of disappear again and um you know with these tours and stuff like that not saying that they're they're not well attended but you know Hopping on the on a, on the tour with Mismore, you know, he, they've he's got a big bigger following. You know, a lot of people are paying attention to that, and um, it t tends to be a lot of people that show up. And I think for us, it's just like, well, that's cool because the album's just coming out, and it's just exposure yeah. for us. You know, so we're really thankful to have that opportunity to just like turn right back around and and show people the record. And and um, you know, I think we're playing in front of crowds that you know are would receive both of the bands, you know, in the same regard. Um, so just, you know, uh, exposing me like, Hey, this is who we are, you know, it kind of feels like a reintroduction. Um, and a lot of people that probably, um, have never even seen us or heard of us. You know? Yeah. Well, and I, I was thinking, you know, you said it and I was thinking, I feel like with that, with Ms. Moore's crowd, I, it would mesh really well with, with what you guys um, have to offer. So totally. I would hope just as a fan of the music that you guys sell out of all your stuff by the end of the tour and you're like, Oh damn, we got to re up, you know? Yeah. That, that, that would be an awesome feeling, you know, just to, to be moving stuff and, and also getting income, you know, for, for going out there and, and going to work. I mean, now that we're all a little bit older too, I mean, I really look at it more like that. It's not like we're all staying up all night and partying anymore. Um, it's more like we got work to do tomorrow, you know, and just really focusing on, on showing up and, and just sounding as good as we can and just, you know, being kick-ass, you know, and having a good time. It's funny how that mindset, how there's that mindset shift, you know, when you're younger, the first yeah. thing is we're going to go out, we're going to party. We're going to have a great time and yeah. see the country and you're yeah. playing shows hung over. And then you get older and you're like, like, no, we want to make money doing this. We have to sound <laughs> yeah. good beyond point, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we put so much work into it too. You know, I think initially it's like, it gets to a point where when you're doing it for this long too, it's, it's, it's nice to have something and, and, you know, even just to come back home, even, you know, I yeah. mean, that's a that's a great feeling in itself and then to make a little bit on top of that um and and to have people you know thoroughly enjoy it and th you know that's that also speaks volumes so you know i think it is you know it's it's a lot nicer to have something like this and i mean we haven't had many tours where you know there's all these guarantees so it's kind of nice we know what we're in for and and what to expect every night and uh that does yeah, uh, it's a little sigh of relief. Like, ah, uh, you know, not like what what's tonight gonna be like? Are we gonna get gas money? Is this gonna work out? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we've all done that though. You know, played those shows of where course. you're like, fuck the it's just the bartender. Like uh... yeah. <laughs> I think that that's a part of the initiation, you know. Yeah, for sure. Like if you haven't done that, then I, I don't know, man. I think that you, it's a, it's a part of this, you know, and, and it really is. It shows you where's like we we're talking about, like, where's your heart, you know, mm -hmm. are you here just for all the people to show up 
or are you here for the music you know and of course like you don't want to play to empty bars your whole life but you know especially for just starting out i think it's it's good it, it allows you to be humbled and it allows you to have gratitude for the opportunities that do come you know well yeah and it it, it kind of <laughs> touching on resilience um, i know right <laughs> you know if if you're not willing to play to those those empty rooms then you're you're probably not going to make it to those full rooms. Truthfully. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I agree. <laughs> not much else to say there. That's the truth. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all part of it. So what was the, the recording process like uh, with the current album? Yeah, uh, man, that was, that was great. We actually just um, <clears throat> shared some, we were like, Oh, you know what this week, let's, let's post some stuff from the studio. So it's kind of cool. You ask because, We've been reflecting on that as this album's coming out next week um, and looking back at that process and it's like, dang, man, we like we really went to town on this recording. And uh, it was awesome, man. I mean, it was cool. I think initially we thought we might be recording elsewhere. Um, I think initially we were talking about working with Billy Anderson. Um, we worked with Sanford Parker on our last album and learned a lot from him and, you know, and and then. Also on our radar and the whole time was was Greg Wilkinson at um, Earhammer Studios, which is, you know, local for us, uh, yeah. pretty much not too far from where we live. And uh, yeah, it kind of serendipitously worked out. We were thinking about that and the travel and the things that needed to happen. Uh, and I, in hindsight, it, it, we worked with the right engineer for this job, and that was Greg. And um, he's been friends of ours for years, so it's just nice too you know i've been in those situations where you go into a uh, studio and you're like we don't know this dude you know we know that we, we want him to record it but how are we going to have chemistry you know that's an important part of the process i really realized and so another reason i think why this album went so smooth was just being able to be with greg and uh, shoot the shit and and joke around you know uh that was that made it just that much more of an experience and we really we brought a lot into it you know we <laughs> all the gear that we went through and that we we tried and amps and I mean, it was the whole process uh of course that's what recording is um but we yeah. we booked enough time to have a little bit of leniency which is really nice um not just going we gotta hurry we gotta like get we have three days or whatever it is you know we gave ourselves some more time so that made it more kicked back and then colby our drummer lives um really close so you know it was nice because we're from a little bit out of town so we were able to just record all day and then just go back to his house and relax and i think that it was all in all very smooth um process and it was fun experimenting greg was awesome with that as well and we really had a vision and we knew mostly what we were going to do in there but um you know we brought other stuff with us like oh you know what i think listening to that we should put this in here and so that part was that part was a blast too. just um, experimenting with different instruments and different sounds. And um, yeah, it, I mean, and and because of this album being named Resilience and our lyrical content and all that good stuff that goes along with it. Um, you know, I think Brandon and I were that we're writing the lyrics uh, really put a lot into it lyrically. And uh, I think when it came down to doing the vocals, once we had laid down a lot of the music, it, it got it got emotional. In a, in a good way it felt like man we're we're like really like moving some energy so to speak here <laughs> yeah like yeah. really connected with that yeah it, it really felt like therapy this recording session more than ever it felt like i got out of there and i just like kind of went went and faced myself in hell or something like that in a great way i think every day just all the intention and the emotion that we were like putting into all this like we were i was like emotionally drained after it i was just so enveloped in in the process and all of us were and that that's what made this this whole recording experience um so awesome so yeah that's cool and it's you know it's really cool to have someone um on the board that you have a relationship with because it it oh man it, it really Huge. helps i feel like it helps the band relax and there's not as much um pressure to oh we've got to do this just right so he's yeah. not you know, this guy doesn't look at us different. Like, you know, you, you go in there, yeah. you have a fucking, you have a good time. You, you play the music and 
because you have that relationship with you, he's, he's able to say, Hey, listen, why don't we try this? You know? Yeah. Oh, well, fuck. We didn't think about that. You know? Yeah, no, that, that was great. And it's, it's even funny thinking about feeling pressure in that place. Uh, and Greg always has this attitude too, you know, like, we're like, Oh man, we need to hurry up. And like, that's uh you guys are paying me to do this. So <laughs> yeah. Take all Take the time you want, man. He's a jokester, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, it's good It to have someone that, that can cut up and make you, you know, go, Oh yeah, you're, you're right. Like it is what it is. Let's, let's just do it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It is though. It's so nice to just, you know, all the elements that I described and what you're reflecting, uh, that just, I mean, honestly, that makes a record better, you know? Yeah. So, you know, is what do you, what, what are you experiencing during that or what your intentions are, whatever it might be. It's, you know, uh, and, and that's why records sound awesome too. Cause maybe it was a total, um, stressful, you know, painful environment or, you know, just the process in itself. And, you know, that's going to convey a certain message too to the audience. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like just, just hearing it, not even, you know, it, you know, cause you're experiencing what these people are experiencing through their music too. So it's, it's cool how that stuff works. For sure. That's, uh, and I think, you know, to me, music is like the ultimate connector for everyone, right? Don't even have yeah. to have lyrics you go in there yeah. you you listen to you know a really good song or a really good album and and you know like oh yeah this is this is how it made me feel right and other people okay. connect right with that so true i mean being a guitar player for sure i always have said like guitar is my first language <laughs> <laughs> uh just be, like you said you know i mean and and then honing in on just actually playing being a guitar player and and the expressions that you can make with the, the style of your playing and the notes that you choose all are a part of this whole yeah. entire you know reception that people are going to get from this hell yeah well, let's let's switch gears for just a second. Yeah, that's fine. Who is there a band that you saw live that just you were like, yeah, I mean, they'll be OK, but they just absolutely blew you away. I mean, gosh, of course there have been. Uh, I'm wondering who's coming to mind here. That's a good question. That's like a little um, brain teaser for me right now yeah um switching gears like you're like oh no sure. i know we we did but i like that i like that i'm thinking it um i mean gosh just just bands whose names i can't even remember that like we've we've gone on tour and we're just like don't even know what to expect and we play some little basement and i don't know maybe it's just some kids and they just like absolutely decimate the place and you're just like what yeah um I love being surprised uh, in that way. Uh, I will say, I won't, I won't say that I thought it was going to be meh. Um, but the first time that I saw neurosis, um, you know, I was like, cool, I'm going to go see neurosis. I'm excited. And um, <laughs> I had no idea what I was in for, you know, that, that just completely like blew my mind. And I, Talk about a, a band that that really captivates and draws in the listener just with that raw emotional power. And yeah. I, it's kind of like what we've been talking about too. <laughs> Even though we're switching gears, bridging it, you know, uh, is is the uh, just what can be conveyed through the emotions uh, of of the band on stage. And that band is just, <laughs> I really don't even have words to describe seeing them live. Um, I've had tears in my eyes watching them, you know, I've, I've just, it's Ugh. completely moved me. It's totally crushed me. And I, I love the band too, you know, but, um, so there's that. And, you know, I think just those surprises, uh, uh with like, you know, playing these, these smaller shows and doing smaller tours and, and not knowing what you're in for, or maybe checking out a band online and being like, these guys are cool right on or right. And then showing up and, and you're like, you know, just, yeah. You know, I, I always, whatever you could, uh, you know conjure <laughs> uh, you know i always love that you go to a show i there's a there's a band here um called surface they're a hardcore band and uh -huh. 
I went to see another band. Oh, probably probably last year, like end of summer, beginning of fall, and yeah. they they played, and I was like, "Man, they're fucking good." <laughs> like, all right, cool. Like, kind of <laughs> keep that in the back of my head, and then I saw them again, the beginning of this year, and they they fucking rocked, and they were both small shows, like 30, 40 people. And then I saw him in May in front of there's probably six or seven hundred people there. Yeah. Wow. And, and I I watched this was what really got me. The front man, he's he's I'm gonna say he's 20 or 21, but I he might be mid 20s, you know. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not real sure. His command of the audience, mm. I was so blown away with. And you know, the whole band great show but he was like audience do this and they fucking they did exactly what he said and i was just like and it wasn't like a small group it was the whole fucking audience i'm like holy shit yeah 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 i mean and that's the other thing too is like you hearing the records and um you know maybe it's not you know just completely uh surprising you with the music but it's also like what what's happening with the live show and like yeah. and the, the singer that's just like rocking it or or whatever it might be or for me you know just you know uh seeing guitar players and being like holy sh-, like wow that guy <laughs> yeah i've heard the record but whoa you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> ripping <laughs> yeah the record's good know- but you're better live dude yeah 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 and uh, another one that you know uh just as i'm thinking of it uh which uh everybody knows this band now but uh blood blood incantation oh, and fuck, um, so good dude uh i was i just was like laughing because um it just it's exactly precise like as the record sounds like there's not one flaw that i could even I, i'm not looking for that but i started looking for that like are they gonna like like everything was just so tight the, those guys are flawless like with their lives sh- i mean they they put in the work you know yeah i've seen them i only seen them once and it was when they did the tour with gore guts mayhem and cannibal Corpse. oh yeah and i've listened to them and i really enjoy the music and so i'm like oh i'm gonna get there and watch and i i was enthralled with their set yeah. it was so fucking good yeah they're 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 phenomenal like in their and their live delivery too you know yeah and it's just the music like those guys are up there rocking it's not about like the stage presence or anything they're just like it's the music like you're just gonna get punished <laughs> yeah and that's you know that's the best thing though is like when the band is like yeah i mean we're playing the music but the the important thing is the music yeah i mean that's why everyone's there but of course i'm right I, I'm sure there are some people who are like, oh, I think he's hot. So I'm going or, or, you know, whatever, (laughs) but (laughs) yeah, definitely. (laughs) So, um, you know, long, let's talk about like over the next year with the band, what, uh, where do you see the band in 12 months? Yeah, that's, that's, um, uh, uh, kind of humorous to me because I know you don't know, but we don't know what's happening next month with this band, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, but if, if I were to look at things and ideally what would happen, um, you know, we would be, so this is the other thing that has made things interesting is that Colby, our drummer, he, uh, moved from Oakland to, um, Asheville, North Carolina. So, <laughs> that that doesn't make just getting together that easy nope. and um and so once again <laughs> it requires a lot of work and resilience for us to keep it together and um you know when he said he was moving we're like you know you still want to do this yeah okay cool because we didn't have one thought about the fact that like oh this is inconvenient um you know this isn't gonna work it's too far it's a long distance relationship yeah. or whatever um it was just like no you're our guy like this is this is we got to do this so you know it's it's provided some new challenges for us and we're accustomed to challenges so I'm sure we'll figure it out but with that being said i think you know just just talking about you know after 
being able to maybe tour on this album a little bit. I mean, this this is a perfect setup for us uh, doing the uh, expose us to a lot of people in the in the states on the Mismore tour, and um, you know we're really ready to get right back on writing uh, and not sleep on it too much. And I mean, the good thing is is we live here in Chico, and Colby lived in Oakland, so we still were long distances about two and a half hours. So I mean, we would get together once or twice a month, but what we were doing was sending recordings to each other. So. That really helped him. And we even made him some like mock drums, just like, obviously this is not how we want you to sound, but you can at least hear what we're thinking here. And so we've done a lot of writing that way. So that's not going to change much, but I think our goal is, you know, to to turn right back around and, and get writing and um, maybe be able to have some, some cool opportunities. We have not done the West coast for a while, even though we do that way more than we do the U S in general. Uh, I think we're really looking forward to, flying him back out here after this tour at some point and doing something on the west coast as well and um i think in the works i think i can say something about it but um there should be some sort of remix album that's that'll be coming out that has gotten into the hands of many different musician friends um and you know our process and that is just this idea and hearing bands have done this before and we thought it'd be really cool yeah so that's i think that that's what we'd be looking at hopefully we'd be starting to write more music playing some more shows and um uh, hopefully it's uh you know it's nice when it moves a little bit quicker um but at this point i think we've learned how to be really patient and our music really speaks to that too so you know yeah. it's just a a test of the just is us so to speak yeah. the <laughs> test down. of the resilience right like yeah yeah, yeah. like the common theme but you you know, you've really got to, the good thing is like in, in today's world, even being on different coasts, right. The, the opportunity of like zoom, you know, is, yeah. is super handy. You guys, so the, the practice can still happen. Of course, it's not, it's not the same as everyone being in the same room, but you can sure. really, really do a lot. And then writing the, the ease with Dropbox and, and drive yeah. and ha what have you. Yeah, the convenience these days with that is, I mean, it's nice. Technology is an interesting one. I, you know, it's it's as cool as it is scary and destructive uh, and, and where we've advanced to. But uh, this is a part that I'm like, yeah, this is really nice now because, like you said, we can we can write albums <laughs> over the Internet if we need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. it's not our first choice, you know, uh, but uh, we'll we'll do what we need to, to, to make it work. Yeah. What made him move to uh, Asheville? Um, a lot of things, um, family being closer to family, he's married. And, um, I think that it was just, um, time to transition from, from Oakland. I know as hard as it was for him and his wife, uh, I think it was really difficult actually to, to do that when they created such a solid, network of friends and community and we're loved by so many people and, and like the metal scene and aside from that and um and so i i think that it was by you know not they know they needed to do it but they it was hard to do so and um just being closer to family and i think change of scenery and it's really cool talking to him because i can I can tell he misses everybody and misses everyone but um i could see you know it's it's a it's a it's a good place for them and where they are where they are right now you know as much yeah. as i want them back here like so i can go see them all the time uh you know it's what's it's what's best for them man yeah it's cool that that you can like stand back and recognize that you know it's um i know i think i like to say as humans we're so fucking selfish you know like yeah. i want i want i want so um, yeah sometimes it's really important to take ourselves out of it and go it's what's best for you yeah that more of a selfless act and i mean <laughs> i think brandon and i were like you know uh <laughs> and like he, colby knew that N nothing i'm telling you right now isn't something that you know has gone on with the band but uh <laughs> but we knew it too we're just like we support him like a brother so it's like if that's what you got to do that's what you got to do we we all know that he's probably simultaneously pissed off about the fact that, you know, we, we gained some momentum. We're coming out with a new album and then he moves, you know, he's like, ah, so, I mean, that in itself uh, makes me trust the, the fact that I know that, you know, this dude 
our buddy, our brother is, is down. And, and there wasn't a question in our minds, you know, I think that we're just like, just double checking, like you're not done though. Right. Especially with our, we have like drummer trauma, you know, Oh yeah. <laughs> love all of our past drummers, but I think it's just come at un uh, unexpected times. And we've had some drummers move and it's just like, ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Like, you know, I, I feel like that, you know that change and of course the drummer is a a really integral part of the band so to oh yeah to to have that yeah you know, you're like uh no i mean it's crazy though what's really interesting is that we write the music a lot without a metronome and we just have learned how to like find this internal rhythm because we we jam so much without a drummer that i think it's allowed us and the, with the strings to uh really be tight <laughs> so that Hell there's yeah. a benefit to that <laughs> yeah that's cool like it it's nice to to be able to have that you know where you're like ah we can find the time and then you to find a drummer that um you know will fit that whereas just drummers who can't keep time right lars yeah from metallica <laughs> yeah <laughs> But he doesn't play to keep time. He plays to fit no. fit the rhythm. Yeah, it's true. It's true, and it's not always about that, which it, which is which is fun, and and it's a ch I th I think it's very challenging um, with a lot of sparse um, you know movements in the music with the, with the strings. <laughs> it's like we're like always doing these head bobs together, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that that's our metronome is the head bob. Hell yeah! All right, Kenny. Uh, man, I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your night to chat with me. Sure. I think, I think we've had a fucking killer conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, this was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait. I'll see you guys either in Nashville or Indy. That's awesome, man. You got it. Yeah. Make sure you come say what's up to us. And um, and uh, I definitely want to get you get you get you something that we've got at the merch table for sure. So For sure, dude. You'll, you guys will have vinyl with you. So I'll buy a vinyl. We, we definitely, we definitely will. Those are the only things that we're not gifting. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't expect that. I'm totally. No, I know. I'm it. just like, saying. Yeah. Vinyl well, isn't cheap these days. That's for sure, man. No, it's not. But dude, I appreciate yep. you. I hope you have yourself a great night. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, you have a good night and we'll, we'll see you soon. Yes, sir. You sure will. All right, man. All right. Take care. Cheers. Yeah.